Uh-huh. How accurate are the dots now in 2019 and 2020? Do you believe this malarkey? Look, I think even Chair Powell said when res- asked about 2020, who knows? We don't know about 2020. 2020 is, is a lifetime away right now. What we do know, what they do provide some guidance on is 2018. And that's three or four rate hikes total for the year. I think that's a reasonable estimate of where we're going to end up. Beyond that, it really depends on how the global <laughs> and U.S. economy evolve, how the inflationary pressures evolve. So uh, the Fed doesn't know more than we do on that. Julia, when you look at world growth, has it peaked? Yeah, I do think uh, global growth has peaked. We saw uh, an incredible surge. It was led by a tremendous stimulus out of China, out of Europe, out of Japan. Everybody, almost everybody, with the exception of Japan, is pulling back that stimulus. The U.S., China, Europe. So we're likely, yes, the peak is likely behind us. We're already seeing the global manufacturing indicators moderate. Uh, And so, you know, that's not terrible news. That's to be expected. But that also means harder trade-offs probably for policymakers and the Fed in particular. But so, Julie, is it witching hour, right? You see the Federal Reserve tightening, inflation picking up and world growth slowing. What does that mean overall for risks in the market? Well, right now, the kind of inflation we're seeing is not growth friendly inflation. We're seeing headline inflation, commodity price inflation but not so much on the wage and salary side. So if you see that, then that tends to be a demand-destroying kind of inflation. Uh, So we'll see how that plays out. Right now, I'd say the rise in oil prices probably dampens consumer purchasing power a little bit, but at the same time, it kind of boosts our energy industry and investment in the energy industry. So net-net, it's probably not terrible news. If we go a lot further, though, I think we'd be worried about how the U.S. consumer is going to absorb that.